Hey, Dean here with Green Elephant Studio. And in this video, I'm going to actually create a pedal board on the Mod Duo. And uh, you're going to be able to uh, create your own uh, pedal boards with the sounds that you want. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go over this, and it's pretty easy. So um, uh, let's get started. Um, first here, what I have up is actually my personal pedal board. It's uh, pretty wild because I play uh, the NS stick. If you're not familiar with it, it's in the Chapman stick family. Uh, and the Chapman stick is a uh, dual mono instrument, which means it has two separate outputs, uh, the bass side and what we call also the melody side or the higher strings. So um, I actually have used both inputs in the Mob Duo and each side is processed completely independently. Um, so that's what I do. And that's partly why there's so much on this pedal board. But um, uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you an example of how crazy and nuts you can get with this. And this is probably not even the most crazy pedal board I've ever created. So uh, maybe in a separate video, I'll do a walkthrough of my personal pedal board. But for now, uh, let's get started on creating a new one. Uh, so let's start with uh, we'll going up, up here where it says new pedal board and we're going to click on that. Uh, it's going to say any unsaved stuff is going to get lost. So let me cancel that and just make sure I have it saved. I'm just going to say there it goes. Pedal board I have is five X's is what I named it for some reason just so I can find it quickly because I have a lot. All right, so let's click new pedal board and it's going to bring up this blank board and I've noticed that on on newer mod duos the um, uh, what it gives you is a little different and on an older version I created this and I don't remember how I created this as my um, uh, starting point uh, I have to look it up again uh, but anyway this is what I have and what comes up I believe on the new one it's just a it looks like this with not these but has it created like that and like that. I believe that's the way it looks like when you get it on the newer units. Either way, it's super easy to start from wherever. If you want to start with a completely blank pedal board, you can just go like that. It's super easy. Um, I actually like this other uh, gain plugin um, called the Tiny Gain Stereo. They make them a mono. Um, uh, this one was created by Robin Garius. Sorry, I actually don't know how to, I'm pretty sure that's Garius, your last name. Cool guy. He's been creating some amazing plugins for the community. And this is just a small one because we use, I tend to use these quite a bit and I like it better. It also has this amazing, um, amazing, uh, this great function on it, mute function. So I have it assigned to a foot switch so I can just mute out my pedal board and, uh, and go my own way. Uh, so, all right. So, with that said, you just saw me place a plugin on the pedal board. It's as easy as finding what you're looking for in your pedal board library. I have 439 uh, plugins here. And let's see here, you can just scroll through all these. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, tons of stuff. Um, let's see what else. Just I actually have everything. I recently found out if you go to the plugin store on the top right here, it says install all. And so I just hit that. I had most of them anyway, so I just installed the last few that I didn't install. So I have all the plugins. And if you do see down here, my RAM is below 15%. And I'm not exactly sure what, how that is determined, but I believe, you know, the number of plugins you have on there is definitely going to affect that and whatever you put on your pedal board, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so plenty of memory on this thing. Let me get out of here. So uh, also you probably see that I have something called uh, beta plugins, which are showed by these, shown by these little red uh, indicators on the plugin. Now these are plugins which uh, developers have created, but just haven't been fully vetted by uh, Mod Devices, uh, the folks over at Mod Devices and um, so they don't put them in their regular library. 
Uh, you have complete access to this, but it is kind of one of those things. Um, try at your own risk. I have never had any problems with it. Uh, I'm just more of a, I'm not a developer or any of that, so I don't do super crazy stuff. I'm using just stuff that I need, and I've never come across anything that uh, uh, caused my unit to crash or anything. Um, so I think it's pretty safe, but it's still use at your own risk. We're gonna. Sh I'll show you that in another video on some advanced, um, uh, advanced options available on the on the Duo. So, all right, let's get started. So, um, let's just assume we're doing a guitar. You're doing um, uh, just. Um, you need a distortion. You're gonna play through your uh, recording interface and and maybe a, or a mixer and just playing through your monitors. So you probably want an amp. In a cabinet simulator, um, let's get some delay effect and uh, or reverb. You can have both. I have both on my pedal board, so let's do that. So um, let's start with the um, an amp simulator. So we go over here to simulator section, and there's all these different things on here. Very cool stuff. Um, stick players would love this Olympic. Um, uh, simulator, just a super clean tone to it, uh, really adds a nice sparkle. Uh, but one that I like a lot is this uh, thing called the GX Amplifier, and it just does so much. It has so many options on it, and uh, you can get a little lost in it too, but um, it just works really great for me. In fact, I think on my pedal board, it's just pretty much how it's set here. I do a little bit of um, changes on the actual knobs here, but other than that, I think I use the 12AX7 input 2 with the basement and a 4x12. Um, and then I just uh, tweak some of the stuff. Anyway, getting ahead of myself there. Um, to zoom in and out, you can, uh, there's a zoom plus minus button up there. Um, if you can get your cursor to be these uh, crosshair arrows, uh, just click there and it'll zoom right into the um, plugin that you want to look closely at. Um, so we got all the knobs here, so on and so forth. If you want to uh, delete it, you hit this uh, um, garbage basket, um, waste basket icon for just that information about it. You just click there um, and then close out. And then if you want to just see all the um, the functions of it because there are some plugins that just have too many um, uh, knobs or um, settings that can't be shown on the actual user interface so you'll just click on that to access all of them um, or you have ones that they just never made a user interface for it and it's that tuna can you can just find them by clicking there and a lot of times it's just easier also this way because some of the drop down menus are uh, easier to see through this so uh, you can see here this pl plugin specifically has a lot of uh, tone stocks, tone stack models. So you got from the JCM 800, Baseman, you know, Twin, all these different kinds. And then I think also stuff that's totally made up. You can turn it off also, it has a setting there. Um, uh, you can change your uh, kind of like the input tubes that uh, I think it's into to kind of sounds that you want to use, 12AX7 being the most um, probably common one, and I'm not I'm not a tube amp guy, so I don't know too much. And I went through. You can just go through this and just just click on the next one and next one and play. You know, just play a little bit and then listen to it, and then click on the next one and see how that changes. Um, so very very um, uh, uh, tweakable uh, plugin. And then of course you got presets. Uh, so the developer created all these different um, scenarios that you might like within here. So you can click through these if you just want to do that. And if you create, you can create your own also. So you click on user and uh, you can see I've actually created my Dean's 800, Dean's base, Dean's preset. I don't remember. And then I started putting dates on it. So I know around when I created that because I usually like the most recent ones, but I might want to go back in time sometimes. So I started putting Dean uh, 09 25 18. So I've been September 25th, 2018. So 
Uh, and then you can save here. This is a, the Save As button, Save button. Um, what is the, uh, I'm not even sure what Ren is, sorry. Um, and uh, you can also you know, delete them. Uh, assign all, this means you can actually assign um, this uh, menu to kind of scroll through them to uh, use a knob to scroll through them or use a foot switch to scroll through them. So there might be a scenario where you just like to have this amp and you have different kinds of presets created and you want to go through them um, just right on your unit instead of having to open up a computer. Um, and you can do the same. You can assign each of these um, uh, 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 settings or um, uh, parameters to knobs uh, to the knobs or the foot switch on your unit. Uh, just to kind of briefly show you how to do that, uh, let's say I want to have the master gain assigned to a knob. That's here. Knob number one, I want to assign it there. I'll hit save. Done. Uh, one other cool thing about this is that you can actually name how it shows, you know, how it shows right on the screen um, by hitting this extended uh, thing here that I hit. Um, then you can just change this to, um, you know, master game, whatever you want, you know, and then, uh, you can set the, the range that it goes from, because maybe on the bottom end, you don't want it to go all the way to zero at the top end. You don't want it to even get up to super high gain. So you might set a, a range instead where you, you're comfortable, where you get, you won't, you just be outside of your low end, maybe just above your high end so that you don't blow out anything if you turn it too much at one point and uh, the you can also set the sensitivity of the knobs so that um, you know it takes you more turns to get from end to end um, or you know just uh, very quickly goes up and down you know when you turn the knob so we just leave that medium so I just want to show that to you actually I'm going to unassign this uh, hit none and save so now you know how to assign uh, parameters to your knob. And remember, you can assign as many parameters to your knobs as you want. And so you can have 10 different things assigned to one knob. And all you have to do is click on that knob. As you know, you just push down on it. And uh, you can uh, scroll through all the different parameters that have been assigned to it. Uh, the foot switches, on the other hand, are just one, uh, one thing to each foot switch. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so close that so let's just say I like this oh wait, it's set to basement 4 by 12 I like this um, and let's just do this super simple pedal board so um, before I do these things as you can see you can just click and drag these um, uh, cables so you got your your quarter inch uh, plug here and, and uh, plug it into those uh, jacks on whatever you want. And uh, so on the, the pedal board goes left to right. I'm, I'm actually, you know, on a regular camera here, not, you know, like a uh, selfie cam. So let's, let's do it like this. So it goes, anyway, I'm going to do it with my arrow. So left side to the right side. And over here you have inputs one and two. So it says hardware capture one, um, hardware capture two. So when you put your cursor above it, it will tell you what it is. So this is input one up here, input two, and down here is actually the MIDI um, on the back of your unit. Well, I don't have a unit, I have my unit on the floor, so I can't really show you, but you know, there's the, the uh, MIDI ins and outs, and this is the actual um, uh, MIDI uh, input from the back of your unit. Now, with that said, the right side makes sense that it's going to be the output. So we got output one, um, output two. This is hardware playback um, for some reason, uh, the words they chose. And then this is the MIDI output right here. So um, let's say you just want your signal to go straight through. And, uh, um, for some reason, you just don't want any plugins or anything, not even a gain. You just take your, your plug here and go straight across. Now you just pretty much have a, a buffered bypass in, in effect because this is a true bypass one in this in this form. Uh, we've talked about doing true bypass also. It's sort of accessible at the bottom here. This is true bypass. So anyway, if you for some reason needed a buffered bypass, this is a way to do it. 
Um, but we're going to create a pedal board with uh, some stuff here, so let's do this. Um, I like having a game plugin at the end, and it's highly suggested that you do that and even assign this to your, a knob because you it's a great idea just to have a master volume. Uh, in fact, I'm going to call this master volume and save it. Uh, because the, the hardware gain is, is not really meant for changing things on the fly, you know. Um, and plus, as you play, uh, you might have all your plugins just created perfectly, and at the end it's just too loud and it's uh, clipping your output uh, digital to analog converters, and uh, the only way is just to turn down the volume on that so you're not clipping the output. So this is the way to do it. All right, uh, so I have that. Uh, I want to take my input one. I'm going to put it into here. So I'm going to have my guitar or whatever instrument plugged into uh, input number one. Then uh, take the output of the this uh, amp simulator plugin and plug it into the output. Now this this amp sim, just kind of going back to it, has the cabinet simulator built in. Some of these uh, simulators down here are just the the amplifier portion, maybe just the preamp, maybe just the power amp section, all these kinds of things. And um, uh, but it might not have a cabinet sim on it. So there's the uh, cabinet four. Um, one that I just started using is a recent addition, which is oh, here, modern cabinets. Uh, it's created from uh, impulse responses. Um, so it really has more of a realistic sound to it than um, some of the EQ-based um, uh, cabinet simulators, which I'm just assuming the, the other ones are. Maybe not. I could be totally wrong. They sound great, too. I like what they do to the sound. Um, but anyway, I just recently started working with that one. But anyway, I don't need it because this one has a cab simulator. I think it sounds pretty good. And uh, at this point, you can plug your guitar into... Um, into input one, play your guitar, and see how this sounds. And uh, voila, you're, you're already playing. So right now this output, you saw me plug this into two different places here. Um, and this is because of the amazing uh, routing capabilities of the Mod Duo. So um, in this case, I need to split the signal so it goes out both my output one and two. Uh, a reason for doing that is that you just don't want to have to worry about which output to use at a gig or at your home. You maybe even have a stereo uh, effect, which um, I like doing because I sit, you know, right here actually where I'm sitting is right between my studio monitors. And I really like just sitting here and, and hearing the swells going left and right and just getting lost in that. Um, but that doesn't work in, in many uh, live situations, so uh, I may set it up differently. But for now, let's just do that. Let's, you can, there's two ways you can um, just drag and it will highlight the input here. And you can just place it there and do it twice. Or you probably saw this happen here, is that you can pull it. And if they're close enough, they'll both highlight at the same time. And then when you let go, uh, they both get plugged in right away. So it's pretty cool. Um, the same can be done on the other end. I'm not saying, but the opposite. It's not the opposite. Instead of uh, splitting signals, you can combine the signals also. All right. So let's say you have your, you're, you're just one instrument. You know, you play guitar, mono, um, mono signal going into your duo. And you just don't want to have to worry about choosing input one or input two. So let's just feed both of them to the amp, right? So here we go. Just This is a in, input number two. I'm just going to click and drag it and stick it in the same um, hole, as it were, in, uh, in this uh, uh, simulator here. Now, if you have a guitar pedal or anything, I don't have one on hand here. But, you know, you can't just stick two cables and, you know, two, two quarter-inch plugs into the same jack like this. Um, this just makes things so easy it's just um if you know now I, I hope it kind of opens up possibilities for you because we're going to do some things about that later on in this video but uh just to 
it's just part of the amazing thing that this um, this piece of gear does. So, all right, so we're here. We've actually got our amp set. We're happy. We're pretty cool with that. Um, and let's say uh, now I want to have a distortion plugin in front of it. I just want to, you know, maybe get a, um, uh, you know, like a what what kind of distortions do we like, right? So. Um, uh, maybe it wants some fuzz, so we got a big muff down here. We got that guy, and um, the DS1, a very nice um, overdrive sound. Um, let's see here. There's also, you know, you can find a, a tube screamer kind of stuff. Where's oh, here's one? Here's a tube screamer style. So. Maybe there's one you already like in the you know in the physical world. You're already a seasoned guitar player. Me, I don't have that. I um, I've learned about the, all the pedals through all these these uh, plugins. So um, anyway, one of my favorites is that um, is this one, the DS1, and uh, created by the folks at Mod Devices. Uh, so I'm gonna plug. F I want my signal to go in there first. Then plug that into there, and there you go. That's it. This uh, you can click on the button here, turns it on and off, change the tone level, you know, distortion level. Uh, if you look in the actual settings, it's all the same stuff, nothing extra, but super easy. Um, I do want to assign this to a foot switch, so I'm going to assign the this to foot switch number two. And if you have a, let me pick this up. If you have one of these, you can assign, uh, quickly uh, assign to these as well. Very easy. I actually saw it on the drop down here foot X, foot number one, number two, number three, number four. I have it plugged in. That's fine. It's actually my second one. And if you, you can daisy chain them together and have, um, I don't know how many you can plug in together. I haven't been given a number yet, but um, you can plug in a lot of them and have as many as you want. So anyway, uh, but I'm just putting this right on my my uh, duo. Foot switch number two will be that. Save that. So if I hit my foot switch number two here, you're going to see it turn on and off. And actually, even on here, see the light come on, on and off. Cool. Uh, let's put a delay because I really like a lot of delay on my stuff. It makes me feel like I'm in like a like an arena, right? So let's find uh, delay. So I've got 30 different delays available here. Um, I like the Bali delay. This is a very cool one. Yeah. Do left and right and uh, go like that. And you can play around with all the settings to your heart's content. It's a ton of stuff on this. Um, you know, uh, high cuts and uh, low cut on the outputs, feedback blend. Something I like to do is have a quarter because um, uh, this actually has two um, two delay engines on it. And uh, what I like to do is have them uh, play. Uh, at a quarter and the dotted eighth. That comes out really nice. It's just a nice background, super, re uh, not reverb, delay, and uh, makes the sounds I like. Uh, specifically on this one, um, let me move this, you can move these wherever you like. Uh, it's going to do one delay out one side and out the other side. Uh, feed uh cross feed between the two delays so they're actually more boom, 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 boom you know it can get pretty wild uh the other thing i like about this is you can have a tap tempo you can assign this to a foot switch um uh, on here um so that's pretty cool um or you could also this one actually has the functionality of using the the global bpm of the of your pedal board so that is super cool uh, not all uh, plugins are using this function quite yet 
I do hope all the developers do update them because this is something I like. I want to have everything, you know, right on time with each other. It'd be so cool if I can get my panner to go left and right with the delays, you know, going at that same or flanger doing this thing where it's just swirling around and and then your delays are on time with that. And I think that would be super cool. Um, so I'm sure it's going to become a reality very shortly. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use this so I can use this knob to set it up and down. So close that. And that's it. I mean, you have a pedal board. Let's make sure we're saving our pedal boards. Uh, so I'm going to hit save as. I'm going to call this um, uh, green elephant test you know, just for this uh, video here and save that. Um, and just like any computer or anything, I highly suggest hitting the save button every now, now and then as you're working with your pedal boards because you, will, you don't want to lose it if something does happen. It does save your last settings uh, for any reason your, your um, uh, duo gets unplugged. Um, but just know that if you recall any other pedal board, you're just going to lose all your settings. So uh, just remember that. So uh, just keep saving. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to uh, finish this video there. Um, as you know, if you're looking for uh, just do one more things, down at the bottom left here, pedal board library. And um, you can see I have so many pedal boards here. Uh, it takes a second for them to all populate. I have, I really got to clean up stuff here, but um, let's find my green elephant. It's in, should be in alphabetical order. Uh, there it is right here. Here's the one we created. Super easy. Click on it. It'll bring it up. It's already on there. So, uh, you know, whatever. Also on the pedal board library, if you ever have to delete anything, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Hit that garbage can there, permanently delete it. So be just be sure you want to do it and then hit OK. It is deleted from the saved pedal boards. And let me go to the constructor. It's still there, so I can still uh, just go ahead and save it. And it's again on there. So anyway, I'm going to leave you uh, there. That should be plenty of stuff. Um, on here um, just be aware of how uh, how flexible things are and that you don't have to stick to the norm of distortion into um, you know your amp and into delays and things like that or you know the, the common thoughts I've made pedal boards where my uh, reverb was the first thing before a distortion plug and and it is crazy just try it it's just it I, I just suggest trying these things and just getting crazy with it, you know. Um, uh, what else? Oh, one other thing. I keep thinking of more other things to do, but uh, let me bring up pedal board uh, or just a, you know, a plug in here. This is how flexible this is. Um, when you're uh, wanting to route anything, just remember I talked about um, bringing things together. Uh, splitting them and it's not just be right before or right after I can bring in um, let's say I like the direct sound of my guitar to also blend in with the distortion plugin that I put in there super easy still I'm using both of these uh, and then I just bring that and I put it there now I can blend as much or as little of the direct sound of my guitar or whatever instrument you have. And, and this is very common to do with bass guitar, right? And um, affect them completely separately. Uh, in fact, what I like to do is use a low pass filter right here. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to, uh, usually it doesn't matter which air, which direction I do this. Uh, sometimes I usually do the low pass first into the, the gain just I just like it that way better, but it doesn't matter because this doesn't do any kind of uh, volume thing. I'll just get like the the you know the the highs all cut, so it's just very woofy, or uh, not woofy, but just bass, right? Just getting sent out, and I like to blend that with uh, a distorted signal of the um, the bass. 
Uh, I might not even put it here. I might even do it after the, the amp because that causes distortion. I'm just cut out some of my lows, stuff like that. I mean, how cool is that, right? Uh, there's just, there's, it's pretty difficult to do that in the physical world. Um, uh, I also come from the, um, you know, uh, engineering world where, you know, I want to blend different amplifier sounds, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you like to do a, a Vox style amp and blend that with a, you know, like a JCM 800 or something like that, right? Uh, I've heard of, of guitarists doing that. Just bring up another, um, a guitar amp simulator. Be very aware though of the CPU usage because those can sometimes uh, use up, uh, especially simulators can use up a lot of, of CPU. Just be aware of that. Uh, I don't think it's a big issue with two, but it, it totally depends on the plugin you use. Some of them use a lot, some of them don't. So anyway, uh, just be aware of that. Um, the other amazing thing is check this out i'm gonna unplug these here and by the way if you have multiple things plugged into one place here you click it and it'll show you the two so you can unplug the one that you want to unplug uh, sometimes you just want to unplug them not all of them and that's how you do it and so i'll just go like that boom if there's only one in you just click and drag out anyway i want to show this to you look at this i'm going to take the output from this i'm going to bring it around and plug it right back into it. This is a feedback loop. And in most cases, you're not gonna to wanna to do this. It's it's not a good idea. Um, but for example, maybe you wanna play around with some feedbacks, and I've heard guys doing this, is to take like the output from your amp, go like that, and then plug it back into here, and then assign this maybe to a, um, uh, to a, uh, a knob or something, or if, you know, if you have a MIDI, um, uh, expression pedal, you can do that. Um, I'm going to do assignments in another video, by the way, especially for MIDI, but, um, cause I just want to create pedal boards here. But anyway, this is the amazing thing you can do here. You know, you have your guitar here and then you want to blend in that feedback signal or something like be careful with this though, because it, it could probably, it, it, there's a, high possibility that you'll blow out your speakers or something or, or it, it would just sound horrible but give it a try you know i think it'll probably work i haven't tried it yet but i've heard of people doing it um maybe putting a harmonizer on there or i don't know what the feedback you know note will be when it's doing that but it's gotta sound cool right i mean anyway just have fun you know don't be encumbered by the standard way of doing things um, blend and and blend signals and split them however you want and just have fun with it so all right so there i am going to end this video here um, up next i'm going to do some uh, advanced settings on here uh, because there's some stuff that's actually showing on this pedal board right here um, uh, including the betas and the uh, um, some of the things that are showing up on this pedal board, which are not on your standard one when you get it out of the box. So uh, I hope you watch that video too. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.